the people from the future North projects who are getting funds for their movie projects. And I have a few questions for you. First of all, my very first question, who are you? Uh, I would like you to start and then just pass the mic around to the person who wants to say hey, next. Hey, my name is Arman. I'm a director from Latvia. Hi, I'm Paula Rada and I am a filmmaker from uh, Schleswig-Holstein. Hello, I'm uh, Helen and I'm a director from Estonia. Mm, and I'm Gaila and I'm director from Lithuania. Okay, thank you very much. I will start with you. Um, you're Gail. How is your name pronounced Gaila. again? Gaila. Gaila. It's yeah. a really nice name, I think. Oh, thank you. Um, so you're from Lithuania. What? Uh, and I already also. I want to ask some questions, of course. Um, what stories do you want to tell? What stories? Oh, it's a good question. That's a very good question. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think first of all that we would be interesting, not only for me, but for others. I think this is the most important. And um, I, I don't have like specific genres. I, I work on documentaries, but I also write fiction. So it's, um, so I, I don't have, but I think yes, it, but it would be interesting. This is the most important. You graduated from screenwriting, right? Um, how come you chose this um, special kind of field to um, graduate in um, from college? Mm, um, I don't know. This is actually I was a teenager, and yes. I was um, I was going to English courses because we we didn't have good English teacher at our school. So my parents said, "Okay, you have to go to the courses to improve your English." And it was it was the day they asked like what's what kind of profession you wanna have and it yes. was really I, out of nowhere I somehow I said screenwriting I, I don't know really why and uh, she was okay wow very interesting uh, and what 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 was screenplay what's your first screenplay you wanna write and I said oh it's it's gonna be about trains so <laughs> it, it was the first <laughs> first uh, something like that and uh, yeah and that's how it happened and um, then i chose to study it you like trains then uh, yes and now i like <laughs> do <laughs> you not do you not thomas the little train engine um, mm, we didn't have it as I was child. Oh yes, so it's it's a bit di different, yeah. But uh, but I've I've heard of it, but I I, I didn't read it or watch it. Uh, Thomas' little train engine is really good. You should watch it. Um, can you tell us something about your upcoming documentary? Uh, this documentary, it is about a photographer. Yes, his name is Arturas Morazovas, and uh, he's making a project about people in Lithuania uh, who are kind of uh, suffering from social isolation. So oh, they yes. are outcasts of society, they, they experience poverty, they, they, really, they don't really have money, so they live in very poor conditions. And uh, uh, w what he's seeing, it's because they, they became like that, because we didn't adapt to independent Lithuania. So af yes. after Soviet Union, we somehow we, we got struggles. So yeah, so this is the story about three people like that. And at the same time, because he is a war photographer, we see his pictures and videos from war, like in, in Ukraine and in Georgia. So it's, it's kind of two plots how, how I am doing. Oh, how interesting. That sounds like a really complicated story to tell, especially because there are so many layers of social isolation. Um, there was a lot of social isolation in the COVID time too. Will it be mentioned in the documentary too? Or is it more for um, social outcasts who are really like casted out from society? Uh, yes, it's, it's more about society, but I think we can all how to say even like we, we can all empathize with isolation we know what it feels and isolation can be in in very different forms for example i had an illness and i was ill for two years and uh, i i wasn't outcast of society but two years I, I couldn't work i couldn't do much so it was kind of social isolation so those people were um isolated because of poverty because we we don't really have good conditions and money but i think we all of us can see ourselves in isolation in one time of our life or another so yeah 
Thank you very much. That was a really interesting take. Thank you. You're Helen, right? Yes. Um, you're from Estonia, right? Yes. This is your first full-length feature film, right? Yes. That you're presenting here, that you're working on. What is this movie about? Could you tell us? Um, this movie is uh, based on a famous Estonian book. Uh, written in the 30s and oh, uh, the film is about a young woman who moves to the city from the countryside yes. and uh, goes to work uh, for an older man uh, who, uh, who um, finds her how do you say romantically interesting so he starts oh, yes. uh, using manipulation techniques in order to get her but she doesn't uh, like it, like during the story we show how she because of that falls in love with him as well and um, oh, yes. and then we s uh, then we kind of convey how uh, he loses interest because like now when you get somebody oh, uh, yes. then you lose interest in how that drives her crazy basically you also said in the beginning before we start recording of course that you really like psychological thrillers such as Gone Girl and Julian Flynn's work was that um, something you were inspired by because this sounds like um, a very psychologically thrilling movie especially when a woman who is driven crazy by a man is in it tell me about it um <laughs> I think the, one of the reasons why I uh, love uh, Gillian Flynn's work, for example, is because these are the stories that kind of interest me, and this is these are the stories that I want to tell. Because a lot of the times um, we deal with big problems, but we forget that sometimes the small problems um, in psychological problems in ourselves um, create the, the bigger uh, conflicts. So and and. <laughs> Like I have been manipulated a lot in my life, and mm. I've I've seen it from the inside. And th there's not a lot of stories that uh, convey that uh, in an authentic way. So I feel that that's something that I want to kind of give audiences in order, like, so they could see it from the side, and through that maybe learn how to recognize that. I think that's a very noble act and I think it's great that you want to make light of manipulation in a way that will be accessible to normal, I'd say, in quotation marks, audiences too. Thank you very much. You are um, Amandes, right? Armands. Armands, I'm sorry. Fine. <laughs> um, you're from Lettland, right? Yes. You made. Uh, you are currently working on projects about youth and drugs, right? Sorry. You are currently working on a project about youth and the uh, youths are teenagers and their drug use, right? About cannabis <sighs> and speci uh, specifically. Not really. It's oh. it's basically I would call it a coming of age story, but it's not teenagers that are coming of age. Oh yes, interesting. They are like 28, 27, so it's like delayed uh, coming of age story about uh, it's about this group of friends and it starts out by uh, two of them being in the childbirth situation and the rest of them are in the festival doing drugs and kind of being young still. And then they, at the end of the festival in the morning, they receive this picture of the young born kid and it kind of uh, something clicks in them that they are no longer like uh, youth. They are kind of, they have this idea of growing up. And so it kind of starts this chain of events where they kind of need to face their own destructive tendencies. It, it includes addiction. It includes like toxic, being in a toxic relationship to one another. And uh, and also it speaks about mental illnesses in a way in, in this everyday life kind of way where they are part of your everyday life, which is part of, I would say, my generation's everyday life. Kind of, it's it's very, um, let's say, a lot of people are struggling in a way that we don't call it struggling, we call it just living. So. And yeah, and then it starts with this group kind of being together, then they separate, and in the end they are ag again together because one of the guys commits suicide, so it kind of brings oh. them back together. So it starts with a kid being born and then and then a guy leaving the town. That sounds like a very heavy movie, actually. 
but it sounds like a story that I think is really relatable to people um, in the millennial age of today, the, mil mil the millennials, I would say. Um, and to get onto that, do you think the way that you people, your generation from, I'd say, the 80s to the early 90s, um, the way that you grew up in Letland is different from the way people of those generations um, maybe grew up in, say, America? Or I think it's definitely different because we had these like uh, wild 90s in the Baltics. So the Soviet Union collapsed. Our countries gained independence, but all the economics, everything was fucked. Nobody. I'm sorry. <laughs> sure. It's it's okay. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and and it was kind of very rough. It was a lot of poverty, a lot of uh, uncertainty, and so our parents were in that situation. And I think the being the best parents were, were not on their priority list, or or so it kind of. I think it transferred a lot of trauma to my generation in a way. So yeah. Generational trauma is a big topic in the generation of the last 50 years. Of course, due to so many societies or so many, uh, so many systems collapsing, you are now also part of this generation who might have experienced um, generational trauma. Um, is there a way that you think um, your generation should do healing, your generation should how your generation shouldn't pass on certain things to the next generation? I mean, I try. I have a kid. I try not to do the same things, even though I kind of sometimes feel that I revert to some of the things that my mother acted in a way, but I try to be conscious about it. I try to kind of uh, stop myself, breathe a little bit, and kind of do it differently. But I think it's uh, it's just about trying. I don't know if there's a recipe to... I, I think, I think, yeah. I think ev every kind of generation does some trauma to the next one. I think it's inevitable, but I guess it's just about measuring it less and less and kind of moving forward slowly towards the light. That sounds like a really hard response, and I thank you very much for that. Thank um, you. You can pass the mic on if you want. Um, you are Polo from Schleswig-Holstein, right? Right. I come from Schleswig-Holstein too. Beautiful there, right? Yes. Where exactly do you live here? Um, I live in Kiel. Oh, yes, That's interesting. Mm. Did you grow up there or how is no, it? No, I um, originally come from Russia. I grew oh, up yes. in uh, Murmansk. It's a northern city in the north of Russia. In close to the border of, no of Norway and Finland. Oh, interesting. And how did you come to Germany, if I may ask? Oh, it's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, we have time. <laughs> I tried to keep it short. Um, yes, I wanted to continue my studies. And um, yes, after I finished my first studies in Russia, I decided to study film, filmmaking. And uh, that was uh, the reason why I moved to Germany. Yes, I would say so. <laughs> so a really turbulent um, young life you had, right? When you moved in, in your 20s, I suppose? Yes, mm -hmm, about this. Mm -hmm. And now you're in Germany. And it's nice here, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, may I ask you some questions about your upcoming project? Yeah, best pleasure. Welcome. Tell me something about your upcoming project. <laughs> 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 yes, I am... Mm, um, working on uh, my new project, it's a um, short movie for children, and v we shot uh, this movie also with children. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this um, kind of mix of uh, live action and uh, animation. Oh, interesting. And what is the topic of the movie? Um, yeah, I would say believe in uh, miracles and... Uh, Yes, yes, like this. <laughs> to believe in miracles, yeah. do you believe in miracles? Yes, and I think it's very important for everybody. And um, this, um, as the movie is for children, and um, there is a little girl who uh, struggles with uh, the problem that uh, nobody uh, wants to accept her um, imagination and her. Uh, as a 
um, beings uh, that uh, she imagined in her head, and I think that um, it's um, also Im it's more important for the children to uh, keep this uh, faith and also for adults because we also have something on uh, something uh, so a kind of miracle we uh, believe. I think that's a really beautiful message to send and I also think that everybody should believe in miracles or continue <laughs> to do so. I stopped a long time ago but maybe I will start again because of you and oh, I thank you very very much for this really nice answer. Yeah, it's so nice to hear it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope uh, I will I want to thank you all for your answers. They were really nice, really detailed and I hope you have a great night. <laughs>